All right, we are green. Okay, today we are going to deploy a Serenity Rust Discord bot on probably fly.io. And I don't know if this will work. So we're on the Serenity docs and I'm gonna go check out the examples because that's the place where I would start. Basic ping bot really seems like what we want. There's a whole bunch of other like accepting webhooks slash commands, I think are an example in here, if I remember correctly. Let's take a look at the ping bot. I think Serenity upgraded to async traits, I don't know, like a year and a half ago. I don't know, it was a while. Time, what is time? Uh, so you accept a message in this case called ping or bang ping. I don't think I actually want that. I want the slash commands, but we can start with this. To start off, I'm just gonna try to get it to deploy on fly, I think, and see if it works at all. Why is there a make file here? Build, build, release, run, run, release. Okay, I think these are just the same build commands for every example in the repo. Let's do GitHub. I um, guess we'll do it in the Rust Adventure set of repos. And then cargo new, what am I gonna call this? Ferris bot. It's gotta be a better name for that. Ferris bot is what it is today. So in this case, our stuff is gonna look pretty similar at the moment. Let's do, what features do we need for Serenity? Client gateway, Rust TLS backend model. So we'll cargo add, if I can spell, Serenity F client gateway, Rust TLS backend model. That should do it, right? VS Code, of course, went to the other monitor. Very helpful. And we've got Serenity. I guess they have default features off too, right? So we will also do that. And then I'll just copy and paste this because I am lazy. Okay, now we need the actual code for the example. Don't want to open the symbols panel. I want to copy the content. Okay, so let's get rid of that. We've got cargo lock, cargo toml, main.rs, and then standard M, serenity async trait. Interesting that they re-export that. I assume that's the async trait crate or the one from the crate and not from a custom implementation. Message in gateway ready, prelude. So we implement event handler using async trait so that we can use async functions inside of the trait. One of them is called message. It has a context. We don't care about the context. The message will have the message content. So if we write ping, then we should be able to send pong. Set a handler to be called on the ready event. This is called when a shard is booted. So Discord bots by default are like global um, across all servers kind of thing. So that's where the shard nomenclature is coming from. Ready payload is sent by Discord. You do have to respond to this ready payload or your Discord bot will not run. It'll just shut down. This payload contains data like the current user's guild IDs, current user data, private channels, and more. It expects a Discord token, so a Discord bot token, something we'll need to create. This is which events we're subscribing to. So guild messages, direct messages, and message content. I don't know that we need direct messages. Uh, we do need message content. Create a new instance of the client logging in as bot. This will automatically prepend your bot token with bot, which is a requirement. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. This is important because in the authorization header, basically you have to do bot space and then your token. So knowing that we don't have to create that ourselves is really nice. Start a shard, listen to events. Okay, so this is pretty good. I need to make sure that I'm uh, logged into the right Fly account. Don't think I am right now. Let me check Fly. Love that I can set the other desktop so that I don't have to show this. <laughs> yada, yada, yada. I guess I am logged into the right account. So what do we do here? Fly launch. I think this will write out our Docker file for us. Create Docker, ignore. Yeah, sure, why not? I don't know where the Discord bot is going to be, so San Jose is fine. So we should have more files now. So Ferris bot, we've got the kill signal. None of that really matters. I think we can get rid of the internal port because we don't actually accept webhooks at the moment. I'm just gonna leave it. Like we don't need to accept any outside traffic. So I think we could just get rid of these ports at all in total uh, because the bot will communicate out via WebSocket. So we should be just okay. We do need a bot token. So we need to go to the developer portal Try to keep this on screen until I'm actually going to have to create secrets. So this is not going to be on screen forever, but okay. So developer portal, I think this is it, applications. Okay, I do need to sign in. I think showing that QR code is okay. <laughs> I hope showing that QR code is okay. Check your phone. Yes, please log me in. Thank you. Okay, I have a couple of applications. We're gonna use a new one. Are you a game dev? Not in the sense that you're asking. So this is gonna be Ferris bot. Okay, create Ferris bot doesn't have an icon. That's fine. Description, yada, yada. I see the public key. I'm going to drag this off because I am skeptical about the fact that they're hiding the private key. <laughs> okay, interactions, endpoint URL. Okay, it's actually fine. 
I can show that. So it shows the application ID, the public key, the interactions endpoint URLs, and other things, none of which I am using at the moment. So we don't want OAuth. We want to go to bot. No private stuff here. Build a bot. We're just in the bot section on the sidebar. Uh, it's called Ferris Bot. We have to call, click this reset token is exactly what I'm going to do in a second off screen. <laughs> public bots can be added by anyone. I think I'm going to leave that public and I'll just gate everything in code. Presence intent. Okay, I don't think I need any of those. Bot permissions. Uh, send messages is something we're going to want. I don't think I want video or anything like that. We can always update these later. I think we've already set these up, actually. If I, if I think back to our code, my guess is that these intents no, I think we do have to set this up in the UI. Okay, so send messages, uh, receive messages, or read messages, wherever that is. Uh, read messages, view channels. I don't think we need anything else. Send messages in threads, I guess. I think that's it, right? We're just going to read the message. There's nothing special for DMs or anything. So I think that's it. I think this is the permissions integer that we need. So I'm going to take this off. I'm going to reset this token. I'm going to throw this into one password. Okay, so we need to set this secret, which I will do on the other window it's called Discord token. Yeah, okay. Discord token equals that token. Okay, so that should be set in our deployment environment. And then I think that's it. Fly what? Fly deploy. Okay, we could do that too. I thought it was going to write out a Docker file for me, but maybe not. I can go grab one. I have Docker files around. There's the Docker file. Copy that. I think we're good on using this in build. There's nothing secret here. Cool. Docker file. Paste that in. I think we're at 1.69 now. Nice. Uh, worked there because I was mounting everything, right? I don't think I really need this. Get rid of the secret. We're going to keep the cargo install. Actually, yeah, we do need to keep the cargo install. We need to do the build inside of Docker because I'm on a Mac. But 169 is builder, worker, user source, core API. This is not core API. This is Ferrisbot. And from builder, cargo bin, Ferrisbot, because we're installing it. I think that'll work. Let's find out. I didn't actually even try to build it locally. I should, probably should have done that. Realistically, I think I'm going to set this up to deploy from GitHub. So potentially be a public repo. But I just want to see if we can get the bot running on fly first. Docker builds do tend to be slower than like native builds. So I don't actually know how long this is going to take. It looks like it's going reasonably quickly, though. The nice thing about putting everything in GitHub actions would have been that this could be cached and then we could use that in the future, which would mean that we didn't need to do all this compiling. OK, so while we're doing that, I actually don't think that there's anything else that I can do right now. I do need to add the bot to one of the Discord channels, but I don't remember if I need to have the bot live before I do that or not. One total, one critical. Did it work is my big question. So many little checkbox to hit. Fly status, maybe. One total, one critical. I think that just means it can't access via HTTP, which it shouldn't be able to do anyway. OK, so I have the URL. I was going to hit the URL over here. And then add it to my test server, I guess. Authorize, I'm human. OK, that looks like it worked from at least the at least the side of the URL. Now I need to find my test server. <laughs> oh, Lord, I have so many discords. Bring this all the way up. OK, so that totally works. Let's show this on screen. Yes, it's been a long time since I've been in this particular server. But if we do ping, we get Pong. So we have a Ferris bot written in Rust. Uh, running on fly.io built with Serenity. So that's really cool. I think I'm going to leave the stream there because this was just a test stream, but I'm going to keep doing this because that was super easy. I think I'll make a video out of it later. So have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.